If there's one thing we know about predators, they enjoy a good fight. That means hunting down the most dangerous prey, including humans, aliens, and superheroes. What are you talking about? When it comes to the film franchise, Predators have a pretty traditional appetite, but cross over to the comics and you'll find that they've pursued a much more eclectic taste in prey. Before we dive into the comics, make sure you're subscribed for our TV breakdowns and movie reviews. Right now on GameSpot Universe, you can check out the history of the Predator, and coming soon, we'll have a review of the upcoming film. That's not a Predator, that's a sports hunter. Well, we took a vote. Predator's cooler, right? <laughs> but, yeah. Hot off the success of the original Predator film, Dark Horse Comics started publishing Predator comic books in 1989. That was even before the sequel, Predator 2, hit theaters. The premise was pretty simple. Mysterious alien hunters visit Earth to fill up their trophy case. But what happens when they get tired of this humdrum hunt? Obviously, they go after other aliens. In 91, Dark Horse introduced us to the Alien vs. Predator feud, one that would eventually make it to the big screen twice. What came after? I don't know! Where were you? We were at the school. Mark, he's dead, and I think they got Nick, too. What was it? Ricky. I don't know. I never said it was good. It didn't take long for Dark Horse to shake it all up and provide the Predators with some fresh opponents. Sure, these crossovers may not be canon, but they are fun and range from straight up silly to batshit crazy. Speaking of bats, the Predators' first superhero showdown came in 1991 against the Caped Crusader. It was popular enough to span for three series, ending with the four-issue run of Blood Ties in 1998. Batman is doing his usual Batman things, like investigating a crime scene in Gotham when he's ambushed by a city hunter. The caped crusader gets banged up in the scuffle and goes home to recover. More and more people are killed by the Predator until the Dark Knight discovers some sonar technology that renders the Predator's cloaking device useless. Do you bleed? If it bleeds, we can kill it. In one of the encounters, Batman bests the Predator with a baseball bat. In another, he gets an assist from the Huntress, and in the final showdown, he cuts a deal with the Predators after copying this guy's tech. Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. So you can't beat Batman, how about the King of the Jungle? No, not him. I'm still not over that, by the way. I'm talking about Tarzan vs. Predator at the Earth's Core, a four-issue run that dropped in 1996. Tarzan comes to the defense of Pellucidar, a sacred land in the center of Earth. The Predators are kind of in the background, using this land as their own hunting grounds. Not cool, guys. It's peak human versus peak hunter, but the difference is that the Predators hunt for sport, whereas Tarzan is hunting for his survival. Yeah, kind of like that guy. It's also worth noting that Tarzan has never relied on high-tech weaponry or explosives, and he might be the one person that's even more comfortable in a jungle than a predator. In the end, the jungle hunters are taken care of when their ship is sent off a cliff and explodes. Shout out to those dinosaurs. What happens when the galaxy's greatest hunter faces off against the galaxy's greatest judge? Out. Did you hear what I said? You know who I'm looking at. You got my eyes? Blue, black, out. Out. Yeah. Not exactly. As we all know by now, predators really only follow one law, the law of the hunt. That's a pretty big problem if they're visiting Mega City 1, because let's just say you gotta follow the rules there. You killed innocent people. The means to an end. You started a massacre. I caused the revolution. You betrayed the law. Law. The predators start their futuristic vacation by collecting the skulls of judges. That is, until Judge Dredd teams up with Psy Division Judge Schaefer who happens to be the direct descendant of Major Alan Schaefer, a.k.a. Dutch. What's the matter? The CIA got you pushing too many pencils? That is pretty damn convenient. It comes close, but together the pair manages to end the extraterrestrial terror. By 2000, the Predators had another shot at Batman and the entire Justice League. This is when things get really weird. See, the alien dominators genetically alter a group of predators, giving each of them the exact powers of their Justice League counterparts. There's the Flash Predator, Superman cape-wearing predator, lame Dark Knight detective predator, a really weird shape-shifting predator with Plastic Man's powers. You get the idea, it got really strange. But thanks to some superhero teamwork, they are able to overcome the Justice League imposters. When 1 vs 1 doesn't work, what do you do next? Make it a 1 vs 1 vs 1 battle royale between three separate characters from three popular film franchises. Aliens vs Predator vs The Terminator ran for four issues starting in 2000. 
If you thought Skynet was bad before, well guess what, in this comic they are making Terminator alien hybrids. Even the damn Predators know this is a bad idea, so they team up with Ripley to destroy the quote, agents of true human evil. By the end, they all end up wiping each other out until there's Ripley and just one hybrid left remaining. We've seen this before, and no surprise here, she finishes the job. This one is pretty crazy, because let's face it, there is no way a Predator stands a chance against Superman. I mean, even Danny Glover killed a Predator. That is, unless Superman contracted a mysterious alien virus that weakened him just enough to make it a fair fight. That's exactly what happens as Superman is taken prisoner by a mad scientist in a Central American jungle. So Superman must fight off local mercenaries and a madman set to infect millions of people, all while being hunted by one of the best bounty hunters in the universe. Sorry dude. On top of it, he's weakened. Clark! Blood. It's my blood. Uh, I think... I think maybe we ought to hire a bodyguard from now on. The Predator nearly kills Superman, but the Man of Steel manages to collapse an entire building on him. Eventually, he comes to trust the Predator and frees him in order to help an even greater threat. The series comes to a close with the Predator's familiar self-destruct farewell. In what can only be described as one of the weirdest comic book crossovers ever, a Predator visits Earth to hunt high schoolers. What are you waiting for, huh? specifically Archie Andrews and his Riverdale classmates. The teenagers are enjoying a nice spring break in beautiful Costa Rica when their trip is suddenly interrupted in the worst possible way. A spring break predator skins a few teenagers and then follows the group back home to Riverdale. Heads are blown off, spines are ripped out, and even a cat gets vaporized. No! God, please, no! No! It all comes to a head, get it? When Archie is critically wounded by the predator. Thankfully, Betty and Veronica hook him up to a healing machine that also makes him Arnold Schwarzenegger ripped, but then he's quickly ripped to shreds by the Predator. It gets even crazier. Veronica and Betty fight back and the Predator eventually reveals that he has a crush on Betty. Seriously. All three hide in a panic room and rediscover the healing machine to bring them back to full health, and to give the Predator some plastic surgery. In other words, they turn him into an Archie lookalike. Like I said in the beginning, batshit crazy. Those are some of the weirdest opponents the Predators have faced off against, but who would you like to see the Predators do battle against? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. My pick is John Wick, there's no way they stand a chance.